Mr. Alt, are we ready? Whenever you are. Okay. I'd like to call this Freeburg Community High School District 77 Board of Education meeting to order. Would you please call the roll? Mr. Parrish? Here. Mrs. Stom? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Henning? Here. Mr. Haas? Mrs. Miller? Here. Mr. Gauck? Here. Mr. Wilkerson? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Do we have any agenda changes this evening? We do not. At this time, we'll open up the floor to any public comments. chance to look over the consent agenda this evening. Do we have any additions, corrections? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Seeing none, we need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Right. Mr. Parrish? Yes. Mrs. Saab? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Mr. Henning? Miller? Aye. Mr. Gauck? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Do we have any committee reports this evening? Uh, we do not. Well, it's time for the student members report. Um, so, and with focusing on the world of like academics and the general calendar, uh, there's only a couple of in-person days left for students as we quickly approach May and then the construction will begin on the new floor of our school. Um, many of the students have noticed that uh, a lot of the classrooms and the uh, newest hall, or the, the hallway down there, whatever direction it is, I forgot, um, that they're being cleared out. Um, and then upcoming is Honors Night, which is on May 2nd, in which the seniors will be recognized for any scholarships or awards they have won for their accomplishments throughout high school. Uh, many of the seniors are looking forward to graduation, very thankful that the administration um, and board have been able to plan a very well thought out and safe graduation for them. Um, and the community-led proms that are planned for April 24th for the seniors and May 8th for the juniors are still planned and will continue um, as COVID guidelines and restrictions have only decreased. Uh, masks will of course be mandatory and there are certain rules um, that they had to sign a waiver for that they follow and if they're not, their parents or the authorities will be notified if any of those are broken. Um, looking at athletics, um, all the indoor group and sport activities have been progressing nicely. Um, all sports have officially become competing at this point, so there were um, some of the spring sports that were just practicing, but now all of them have done their first uh, competition game meet. Um, and many sports uh, that were, um, that had already begun, are beginning to wrap up. Football, cheer, band, and dance all have their senior night tomorrow. Um, soccer has their senior night this Saturday, as it is their last game. And then while some have just begun, like track and field and softball, um, softball's first game was Tuesday, and track had its first meet yesterday, and has one tomorrow as well. And then looking at performing arts, uh, band has its senior night tomorrow uh, night as well. Um, they're preparing to play both at that and graduation. And Mr. Goss, uh, the band director, has been planning next season's band camp, so they plan to do that. Um, and then many seniors are practicing for their college audition auditions to marching band. And that's all that have. Any questions or comments on the student member report? Seeing, seeing none, we'll move on to the principal's report. Okay. Um, so the juniors took the SAT on Tuesday. Um, all of our juniors at um, different schools, CCSI, Pathway, Safe School, also took that assessment. Uh, that is a graduation requirement, so we, uh, I think we only had five kids not be able to take it for various reasons and we'll get them on the makeup days or next year when the juniors take it again since it is a graduation requirement. As mentioned previously, the 9th and 10th grade students did not have to take the PSAT because it was canceled by the state. Um, thanks to all the teachers for proctoring the test and thanks to Ann Miner and John Young for organizing all the setup of the testing. So it went very smoothly. Um, also mentioned by Evan, um, the honor celebration is May 2nd at 6 p.m. in the high school gym. 
Award winners started receiving um, their announcements and tickets this week. And then as the rest of the community scholarships come in, more students will be notified. So they receive a letter um, letting them know that they've received an award and they receive the tickets. And then um, they find out that night what the awards are. We try not to let that be known ahead of time. There's a few that they have to find out for because they have to fill out paperwork and things like that. But for the most part, we try to keep that a surprise. Um, Student Council um, is uh, the group that organizes this. Um, the event will be streamed and recorded. Um, a big thanks to Mrs. Adrian, Mr. Burke, and the Student Council for doing all the planning and getting this moving. Online registration for the 2021-22 school year will open May 3rd to the 26th. The incoming freshman parents have all received welcome packets with this information. And then returning students and parents will receive a teacher notification this week with all the instructions. And then we've actually moved the in-person registration where they have to bring in all the physicals and all the required paperwork to the very beginning of June. This is the first time we've done it this way. Um, usually it's in August and, and I kind of feel like it's been a sprint to try to get it all in and then get the kids in school. Um, most student, a lot of students won't have physicals yet, but they can turn those in throughout the summer and we'll mark them off. But we're gonna go ahead and try to, to get things moving a little sooner and hopefully this, this goes really smoothly. Um, seniors last day of classes is actually for the virtual classes will be May 10th that's a Monday and then we're bringing them in on May 11th to collect all the textbooks Chromebooks and anything else that they still have they'll receive their clearance forms on this day hopefully take care of any remaining fees and um, we'll get them moving here freshmen sophomores juniors their last day of classes will be May 18th um, and then we're going to be busing in um, all of the bus riders in the morning to do textbook Chromebook return and then we'll have driving students come in about an hour and a half later to try to split that process up and collect everything. Um, graduation, um, I included um, information in your packet today about the graduation process. Um, we're super excited about this. Um, each family is going to get 10 tickets to come to this. Um, we're going to sit the students in the stands. We're going to have um, the family spread out on the field. Bathroom debris lawn chairs were um, fingers crossed for really good weather and um, we hope it's going to be a, a good, just a real good culminating event for the seniors. They definitely deserve that. All right. A um, couple things that came in after the report. Um, first of all, the FFA plant sale started this week. Uh, Mrs. Dusty Ingalls and our students, they have some beautiful, amazing plants and flowers and they are going fast. So. Um, if anybody's interested, they should uh, get in contact with Mrs. Ingalls right away. Um, we're going to move Teacher Appreciation Week to April 26th through April 30th. Um, nationally, it's the first week of May, but we'll be remote by that time. And a lot of our teachers won't be here, our students won't be here, so we're going to celebrate with our teachers a week early. It's been a, uh, a crazy year for them as well as our students, so we're going to try to make sure they end on a, a good note as well. <coughs> And then, um, this is new and a, a hopefully a really good announcement for our seniors. The last day of in-person classes for all of our students is April 29th. April 30th is officially a professional development day and moving day to prepare for construction. We wanted to do one more thing with the seniors, so the seniors will actually not attend virtual or for, um, in-person classes on that day. Um, the seniors will be able to spend their last in-person school day together, all of them, participating in a Senior Olympic Field Day. Um, this is being organized by our student council sponsors, Mrs. Colette Adrian and Mr. Burke. Um, seniors are going to be split into 12 different teams for a number of fun games, activities. Um, we're going to work on getting some food out there and just have a really great time with all the seniors together. Um, when we brought all the juniors in for SAT testing, it was probably the first time they were all in the building together for the first time since last March. And it was really awesome to see them and we want the seniors to have a really fun event as they leave us in person. So um, more details will come to all the seniors. Evan, you're the first one in person that gets to hear this. <coughs> Mrs. Adrian and Mr. Burke have been keeping it under wraps and uh, we'll send out all the details to the kids and get it all set up. So. Um, other than that, um, we're, we're moving. Moving day is coming and teachers are ready and packing up rooms and we're getting ready. For <coughs> so that's it. That's awesome. Okay, any questions or comments on the principal's report? We'll move on. 
to the superintendent's report. All right, uh, April 6th was the consolidated election. Um, I'd like to congratulate uh, the four uh, board members that were victorious, uh, incumbents uh, Mrs. Vicki Staub and Mr. Dennis Haas, and new to the board next or for the next four years uh, will be uh, Mrs. Michelle Morgan and Mrs. April Nail. Um, we do have a uh, meeting scheduled uh, with uh, Mrs. Morgan and Mrs. Nail and myself to kind of go through a little bit of a uh, preparation um, for the board, kind of give them an idea of how we do things for the board. Um, the return to school um, uh, committee met yesterday uh, for our first meeting. Um, had some good ideas. Um, I think we've got a good start for the plan. I still am hopeful to have this all completed by the end of May, uh, hopefully by the May board meeting, uh, to present that to the board. Uh, again, the idea is uh, that we are going to be in session five days a week, seven hours a day, kind of normal, whatever that means. Uh, I forgot what it meant. Uh, but uh, that, that's the plan, so there's a lot of details we've got to work through. Uh, legislative update. The uh, legislation was on vacation for a couple weeks. Uh, there was a lot of things kind of lingering. Uh, I've got three different bills that I put out there. I think there's three. Uh, the first one is a consolidation bill. Uh, this bill for is a, uh, forms a statewide commission that will look at consolidation with the goal of reducing the number of schools by 25%. The, the difference is that the commission uh, will have the ability to place an item on uh, a referendum on a local ballot without the school board being able to have a say. So they can just identify the schools that they feel like uh, should be consolidated, throw it on the local ballot, and obviously it's the local uh, uh, voters that would have the final say. Uh, there's a special education bill. Uh, this one has, sounds like it has a lot of legs. Uh, so there's a, it seems to be very strong support with some very strong people. But what it does is it allows uh, students to extend the uh, age out from uh, 22 to 23. Currently it's the day before the 22nd birthday. Uh, this would allow them to stay in school. If they turn 22 during the school year, they could stay till the end of that school year. Uh, the the biggest concern, obviously, is money. Uh, these are students that have uh, quite a few needs that are, are expensive to meet. Uh, the other issue is there is a, a law that says students can't be in the same classrooms uh, and, and have more than four years separate their age. And so if this is in a transition class, so our, our students would go from usually age 20 or 18 to about 22. So if we've got a 22 and a half or 23 year old, yeah, I, they wouldn't quite be 23. There, there could be issues, so we're going to have to kind of work through that, or they'll work through that state. Uh, and then there's two different bills that are being pushed at um, the state that are giving service credit for teachers that worked um, in person during the pandemic. Um, and it goes from March 16th through June 30th, so it's almost a year and a quarter. Um, so it's basically a one-on-one -on -one uh, credit that, that teachers would get. Uh, one of the bills, TRS covers the entire cost. The other bill is pushed down to somebody besides TRS, which would be the teacher or the district. So um, I don't know, I didn't get a real good feel uh, when this was last discussed of how strong this would be. Uh, essentially what it would allow is teachers to get a year of, of service and, and be able to retire early. So, um, you know, once that kind of goes through, we'll get a lot more details, but those are things we'll be keep watching as the legislation uh, wraps up in the next couple weeks. Uh, second floor construction update. Um, I, I feel bad. Um, I had some things going on today and was not able to, to see, but did the trailer make it? Did anybody know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So the trailer made it. Yeah. So the construction trailer was delivered today. Uh, so that'll get hooked up with the uh, electrical. Um, and uh, the uh, Pecker Construction will use that to run the whole operation. Um, Mr. Jung and I met with the staff last week to kind of go over the moving plans. Uh, Jill's done a great job of working with Dennis and, and organizing where all the, the stuff that, that's in the south end goes, and, um, and it, I think we've got a really good plan. 
Uh, we're ready to go. Um, and uh, April 30th will be a busy day, or April 30th through May 2nd will be a pretty, pretty busy time. But we're ready for it. And lastly, the, the scanning project um, was uh, completed. Um, a big thanks to uh, Jackie and Connie for their work and also for Mr. Alt for overseeing it and kind of putting this whole thing together. Um, this, it, it worked out better than I could hope. Um, I think it really saved the district quite a bit of money um, and it kind of sets us up for the future to scan items that need to be scanned and, and be able to keep those electronically. So that's all I had for you. All right, any questions or comments on the superintendent's report? Only on the, uh, the consolidation Build that HB 40, uh, or excuse me, the HB 3, 635. Uh, do you have any interest of contacting the superintendents, or you contacting the presidents of those boards, and see if they're they're interested in consolidation on our terms instead of being being directed by? Well, I had, I had done a straw poll, and the first four people that I talked to. Of our current board we're not interested I didn't even get to you because mm -hmm. when I hit four it was like okay it's not gonna pass if we're voting to yep. to consolidate okay. so that's what that's where it stopped for us well hopefully uh, it'll pass uh, through the legislation and they'll force the issue well they'll force the issue to the voters to vote on it where it should be okay thank you sure all right let's move on to old business um, I've in, uh, included a spreadsheet in the board packet. Um, this is uh, looking at the student fees that we paid this year, our students paid this year, kind of trying to evaluate uh, the classes that, that I feel like the kids probably should have some kind of refund because of the type of class that it was. So there, there are a couple things in there. Uh, I believe there's a copy in your board packet. Um, First thing is, we made the decision um, last fall to um, reimburse $25 for parking. Um, I think we ought to make it another $25, so that would be a total of $50 for parking. Um, we also, at the last board meeting, or one of the board meetings, we decided to reduce the athletic fees. So I, I actually put that off on the right. Um, but the other fees that I am included in here are either a lab fee, a uh, or industrial arts fee and so these are the classes that the kids really needed to be hands-on to really get the most out of the class um, and it kind of worked out that about 25 percent seemed to be um, a justifiable number uh, and the reason is is because we still used consumable items in all these classes um, you know for instance things like the shop classes, well, don't, don't we lose money, I'm, I shouldn't say lose money, we spend a lot more money um, for supplies and, and salaries and lights and electricity than we would ever collect in fees. So the idea of, you know, because we were here half the time uh, to do 50%, uh, it just seemed like it was too much. We're still looking at um, reimbursing a little over $26,000 total, uh, whether it's parking, athletics, or class fees. So that's, that's my recommendation, is that, that we reduce the fees um, as they're presented on that, that sheet. Okay, any questions or comments on that? What is your intention to actually issue a, a check to the people, or if you have the capability of just crediting their account if they're returning and it, apply it towards next Right. Year. If they're returning, we're going to credit their account. If they're seniors, and we do this every year anyway, is once they come pick up the diploma, if they have any fees uh, that were left over, then then we'll just write them a check. So so right now, we, I mean, we have some people that haven't paid their fees, but we will require them to pay their fees before um, graduation. So what we'll do is we'll just go through it and we'll put, make credits to that so there should be a, an accurate balance on what they owe. That'll take a little bit of time for them to do that in the office. I thought it was generous and justified. Okay. We need a motion to move to approve, um, I'm sorry, move to approve the second reading and final approval. Well, you've got that in the wrong spot there. there. 
the restructuring of the fees? Uh, yes. Yeah, so need to approve the um, uh, the restructure of the fees for the 2020-2021 school year as presented. So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Staub. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. Mr. Henning. <laughs> Mr. Henning. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Miller. Aye. Mr. Gauck. Aye. Okay, that motion passes. Next item. Uh, this is the second reading of the uh, the handbook. Um, one thing I do have to tell you is, I think I sent you the exact same uh, language as the first reading. I don't know that I got asked Lori for the updated. Uh, but what we're recommending is the uh, basically what we presented last time with the change of eliminating the change in the dress code. So we would we would take out the um, I'm not even sure what the language is. We're basically, we're not going to change the dress code. Yeah. It stays the same. Okay, any questions or comments on that? If none, we need a motion. I got ahead of myself. We need a motion to approve the second reading and final approval of the 2021-2022 student parent handbook as presented. So moved. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Staub. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gow? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, on to new business. Uh, this is uh, looking at the tax rate and extensions. We did get that uh, form in the mail late last week. Um, this is basically the county coming in and telling us what the actual levy numbers will be. So we had, I had kind of anticipated, I believe, I said somewhere between two and a half to three percent. I thought three was probably strong because I thought I was a little concerned. Um, we approved a levy of 7.73 percent overall. Uh, the levy actually came in at 5.52 percent, which is very good news. So I predicted it would be somewhere between 298 million to two, I'm sorry, 296, 298 million. It came in at 305 million. Uh, the good news is that, you know, it, it's a very strong uh, EAV. Uh, the even better news is uh, we approved a high enough levy that we didn't lose any money. So the, uh, the probably the best news overall is that the tax rate is actually going to go down because the EAV goes up and there's that inverse relationship between the, the EAV uh, and the tax rate because of those set cap funds. It's going to go down almost three cents. So that's, that's very nice for our community. Um, it's, Diane and I went through this, the numbers are correct. It looks like we're gonna get uh, somewhere about 292, almost uh, $293,000 more than we thought we were going to get. That's absolutely a positive. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. And uh, one other note is, it's either next year or the year after, the TIF will come off the books in the village. And so that's going to be about another $5 million in the EAB that we could probably expect next year uh, or the year after. So that's something that's uh, a very positive for the district. And so I would, am asking the board to approve that. I didn't put out a recommendation, did I? You did. You did. Yeah. Do you have any questions or comments? I did. Seven pages later. If we don't have any, we need a motion to move to approve the tax rates and extensions as presented. So move. Second. Mike, with the motion. Second. All right, Mr. Parrish. Aye. Mrs. Staub. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. Mr. Henning. Aye. Mr. Haas. Aye. Mrs. Miller. Aye. Mr. Gow. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Next item. Uh, it's uh, time to consider renewing the OPA food management service contract. Um, I've, I've said this several times that, that that's been a great move for us financially and I think uh, just overall for the district, I think as, as the year has gone on, as a couple years have gone on, especially since Nikki took over as manager uh, of, of our uh, program here, um, I think the food's gotten better. 
I think they're offering a lot more things, trying more things. Um, I think there's about a 3.9% 3 3 increase over last year. Um, but uh, each year we've, we've uh, kept our head above water as far as the budget on that. So we, we, we you know, put our finger in the dike. Uh, we quit, quit leaking water, quit leaking money. So I'd ask the board to approve that. Okay, any questions or comments on that? Seeing none, we need a motion to approve the renewal of the OPA Food Management Services contract as presented. So moved. I'll make it. We have a motion by Angie. Second. We have a second. Second. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Staub? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Raz? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gow? Aye. Motion passes. Do we have any board correspondence this evening? Uh, we don't. Okay, do we have any agenda items? Well, I'm not going to call it an agenda item, but I have to overlook something that I need to do. Oh, so okay. uh, we do have uh, two board members that are going to be leaving us after four years. And uh, um, as a, a, a way to, to say our appreciation, we have plaques for both. Mike, Mike I know you're online. Uh, but it says, uh, for, for River Community High School District number 77 presented uh, by the Board of Education to, in this case, Mrs. Angela Miller, board member 2017-2021, in appreciation of dedicated service to the students, staff, and communities of Freeburg uh, Community High School, uh, District 77. I want to thank you guys very much for your service. Uh, don't spend all the money in one place that you can do this. Mike, we'll get you yours. Yours is I appreciate mail. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Snail mail. Okay. Do we have a reason to go into closed session? We do. Personnel. Okay. We need a motion to go into closed session this evening. So moved. I'll second. Mr. Parrish? Aye. Mrs. Stab? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Mr. Henning? Aye. Mr. Haas? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Mr. Gaff? 